The amazing drama you're about to see is a matter of human record. You may believe it or not. But the real people who lived this story, they believe it. They know. They took that one step beyond. I think it's going to rain again. Well, that be a surprise. Wait till the spring. You'll love England in the spring. Before I go to the office, I'm going to go to customs and see if any of our stuff has arrived yet. By the way, you stay inside today and keep warm. The first three months of pregnancy are the toughest. For whom? You or me? Cheerio. Cheerio. Esther and Will Hollis. He's an electronics engineer. They're both part of a brand new statistic. The tens of thousands of Americans who are sent by their firms to work everywhere in the world. The adjustment for the Hollises has on the surface been surprisingly easy. For example, they know that a shilling is 14 cents, that a chemist is a drugstore, and that a biscuit is a crack. They also know that this house is Georgian architecture over 200 years old and drafty. But there's something about the house they don't know yet. Something terrifying. He's gone to the office. Could you please come as quickly as possible? And there's something about Esther that Will doesn't know yet. You must watch her. Watch her very carefully. Her? And this room. A simple sewing room. Don't you believe it? Honey, for some unknown reason, they sent your bag to the office, but they still can't find mine. Mama! Right now, all right. Promise, Daddy, Daddy, I no, don't no, no. have to go crazy. I don't want to go things crazy. all right. Promise me, Daddy. Now, oh. I'm going to clap my hands, and when I do, you're going to awaken. You're going to wake up, and you'll feel absolutely wonderful. Somebody please tell me what this is all about. Well, somebody better start talking. 
Haven't you explained your husband? No. Explain what? Tell me what's going on here. Esther! No, Mr. Hollis. Let her alone for a bit. Who the devil are you? I'm a doctor. Of what? Witchcraft? <laughs> you may not be too far wrong. Psychiatry. But she was hypnotized like a... like a vaudeville act. Yes, well, you know, properly used, hypnotism can prove to be a very useful tool in the practice of psychiatry. It means that you can reach the subconscious very quickly. Psychiatry? But my wife's the most level-headed, down-to-earth woman I've ever known. Mr. Hollis, your wife is living in terror. Terror? If you didn't know that, then you should. Of what? Of having the baby. Well, of course she's afraid. It's her first child. That's perfectly normal. Normal? To be afraid that the baby may be tainted. Tainted? With what? With insanity. You mean she thinks that the child... And that she herself could go insane at any time. But that's not true, is it? No. It's perfectly untrue. From what I can ascertain, her mother did suffer some involutional melancholia, a condition which often comes, you know, with changes, physical changes in later life. Often curable, certainly not inheritable. No, what went wrong was really with the great aunt. She was, I think, something of an eccentric. And unfortunately, we're rather prone to think that anybody or anything that is original or different is being rather queer. I don't want the baby. I don't care what he told you. It's not true what you think. It's all nonsense. My mother, my great aunt, this is nonsense. The doctor says there's not a chance in the world of anything like that being inherited by you or the baby. I don't believe him. Look, in the old days, everything was tagged and labeled. If a person was eccentric, if he hung the curtains in a different way, then people began to talk. One lovely, sunny Sunday morning, my mother started screaming. She could not stop screaming. And she could never stop screaming again. When is, when is this going to happen to me? Never. Yes, it will. No. What will it happen when I'm nursing the baby? Will the baby become something so terrible in my sick Mind. Something so terrible that I want to fling it. Stop it! Tear it! Rip it! Stop this! If I'm the lucky one and I don't end up in that room up the stairs like my mother, <laughs> well, one day the stop baby. Now, come on, there's nothing the matter with you. Darling, scream. Esther, stop it! And they'll take it away. Stop it, darling, there's nothing the matter and with you! Destroy it!
the matter? What is it? Did you have a nightmare or something? <laughs> Honey, it's three o'clock in the morning. Come. What's the matter? Who are you calling? Who are you calling? The doctor. If he won't help me, I'll find somebody else who will. Oh, darling. I'm not going to have that baby. Honey. It started. What started? What I am. What my mother was. What our child would be. Come on. What did you see in that room upstairs? Nothing. You. Do you know what I saw? It wasn't a sewing room at all. What? child's bedroom. I saw a little girl, deathly ill. You had a bad dream. Oh, it wasn't a sewing room at all. The doctor left some pills. I'll get you some water and you take a cup of me. I'll calm you down. my scrambled eggs. Have you forgotten that I'm the most illustrious egg scrambler, not only in Kansas City, but also in the outlying areas? I thought I heard her again. I'm sorry, darling. I'm sorry and ashamed that you had to find out about me like this. I should have told you before we were married, so you could have run for your life. And if everybody told everybody about everybody in their families, nobody would get married or have babies. Do you know, I love you very dearly. Well, then why don't you prove it by eating my scrambled eggs, which are now cold, as is the toast, as is the coffee. What am I going to do with you? Make me some more. All right. But if you don't eat it, I'm going to run away with Duchess Hooses from next door. <laughs> saw them too. You heard them. Yes. Yes. Haunted. A haunted house. <laughs> well, you know, Mr. Hollis, we've got a haunted castle on our books, but a haunted house. Well, how very droll. What exactly do you want, Mr. Hollis? We're trying to make some sense out of what happened. Oh, yes. Now, let's try and understand it all again, shall we? Now, you say that your house is haunted by a man and a woman. Oh, yes, and their child, whom they're supposed to have murdered. Right? Listen, Mr. Hudson, I don't care whether you believe it or not. What I believe is that for reasons of your own, you're trying to break your lease and you're being a bit silly about it, you know. If you imagine for a moment that this nonsense is legal grounds to get your money back, you're very much mistaken. I don't want our money back. Well, for heaven's sake, what do you want? Who lived in that house? Mrs. Hollis, the house is over 200 years old. How can I possibly be expected to know all the people who've ever lived there? I must know who lived in that house. I must know. Why in the world won't you tell us? 
I'm sorry. I, I do apologize. Mr. Hollis, supposing that you had a house. You owned it and you turned it over to me to rent for you. You told me you didn't want to be bothered about it. You just wanted me to do the lot. Now, that's what I'm paid for. That's my job. And then supposing that the people you rented it to came in here and told you this wild story about ghosts. There must be records somewhere. We'll find out the owner's name ourselves. Mr. Hollis. I, I would like to save you all this bother, you know, but while you, you, you see my position, don't we know it? You see, as long as it isn't me who gives you this information. Mr. Morrison, Mr. and Mrs. Hollis were here, and they're... Hollis, the young people who rented your place. Yes, that's right. Well, they, they say they've been seeing things and hearing things. A child. Yes, a child. In that room upstairs, that second bedroom. What are you trying to do to us? How did you know about Judy? Joan, let me handle this. But maybe they did see something. But they saw nothing. You should have stayed at home as I asked. Hepburn, how did they know Joan. about... But we did see her. We saw her and we saw you, both of you, here. We haven't been near this place for, well, for six months. What my wife says is true. We saw you. That's ridiculous. Then how do we know that you let the child die? It's a lie. I warn you. If you say that again, you'll regret it. How could this happen? I don't know. You and your wife were here, too. How? I think... I know how. So do you. Ever since the night she died. The night we let her die. We've lived those hours over and over. In a way, we... Never really left this house, have we? I couldn't bear to see her wasting away. One night, I forgot to give her the medicine that was keeping her alive. That night, I just couldn't bear to see her suffer. It's true. Even in our dreams, we came back. Didn't we? To her and what we did to her. It was wrong. What must we do? Tell the truth. The judge who tried the Morrisons decided they had suffered quite enough, gave them a suspended sentence. But you may be sure that in their minds, the Morrisons continued to pay the penalty for their crime of omission. How did their specters or their living ghosts appear in this house, reliving that terrible night over and over? Well, there are some who say that houses retain the aura of great emotional crises. Then there's another theory, that guilty conscience can recreate and project for others to see the compelling guilt which haunts them. At any rate, the Hollises 
Will and Esther and their perfectly normal son are now living happily in Paris at the house of Ferret again. If you're interested, you may forget its morbid past. The ghosts have been laid to rest. <laughs>